Well, my friends, how you all doing? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another episode of Project of Scandinavia. And it's another Champions League episode. It's kind of given the last episode away, my friends, but it is above right now if you've not yet checked it out. Uh, make sure you go and watch that one before you crack on with today's episode. But we are but two legs away from a playoff in the Champions League, which is pretty incredible to be able to sit here and say that as manager of Mulby. Uh, one game's been played, we need to get caught up on that first. Uh, also, it needs to talk to you about a player that was mentioned in the last episode. So let's do that and then play these two big legs in the Champions League. Uh, so first and foremost, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the fixture that was played was against Sundsvall. You'll see a 2-0 victory. Horizon from the penalty spot, Ian Leach late on. Uh, it was Horizon, I believe, that assisted that. Horizon really is having an unbelievably good season. Breakout season for the free transfer that we signed uh, in January. As a result of this, um, you will see uh, we are... At the top of the table still. There's only one goal in it though with the goal difference as Jagard run out 4 nil winners in their last game. Pretty good effort from them. But we are both starting to slowly pull out a little bit of a gap uh, between us and Melmo now. Um, but, you know, I, I've said it right at the beginning of the season. This season was always going to come down to those two games against Jagard on whether or not we could potentially retain. There are good teams in this league, but I just feel like we do have the beating of them as we proved last season. Uh, the one one little thing I need to do before we crack on with the game today is that of Chris Zulu. I mentioned him last episode. Uh, he, came, he played the uh, second leg. Um, in the game last time out and it was one of those where I was a little bit confused if I had uh, introduced you to him or not clearly I hadn't because he was signed long after uh, that episode had taken place so here he is this is Chris Zulu he was at Brasilla um, he was someone I looked at right at the beginning of uh, of this series when we were at B93 actually we didn't have the money for him we tried to loan him but he signed full time for Brasilla went out on loan a couple of times and then has clearly been released by the football club and I thought that we would just take a punt on him we've offered him a short-term deal a couple of years uh, as a squad player out on that left hand side we really needed someone to plug the gap in case Evans ever got injured and I think that Zulu does just that South African international as well I just feel like he's a top top signing for us uh, to be making and uh, definitely makes us a bit of a better unit um, at the back so let's crack on let's press forward ladies and gentlemen as we are going to be playing the first leg uh, in this Champions League third qualifying round right now against Olympia Lub Lublana who are a Slovenian football team. Uh, there's lots of football going on at the moment, it does have to be said. Um, but this is the team I've decided to go with. I would argue that this is our strongest team at this moment in time, if we are looking at not only ability, but form as well. And so our first leg is at home. We really do need to be making the most of this one. We're going to go for Fana in goal, Nientel Evans at fullback, Prosto Tucker centre-back, Libro, Segurs and Salo in the centre midfield, Ryerson, Leach on the wings, and Manastrol up top. And so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We line up for the game. Another big, big game. Uh, as you can see, not much away support's been brought to the ground, but we are packing it out absolutely chocker. We broke our uh, uh, gate receipt for the uh, for the other game. I, I forgot to mention 120k we made, which is really, really good money for this football club. Uh, you know, we're selling out in these Champions League nights as uh, first doors, early doors, is a chance to the opposition, and it's headed just over the bar uh, 15 minutes in a chance each but on top of possession as uh, Salo now goes wide to Horidison is he going to get a run at his uh, fullback no he's dead back to Libro Salo again in to Leach lovely run from Evans ball in Horidison arrives at the back post and puts us 1-0 to the good beautiful football from the boys and we are in prime position in the game which is amazing to say I genuinely thought we were just going to be pushovers in this Champions League, but we're, we're really shocking me at the moment as Hans Gunson breaks it 2 0 at the back post. We are playing unbelievable football at the moment. We really, really are. We're just, we are just cruising at the minute through games. We've won our last five, by the way, in the league, all clean sheets. Just a great effort from the team at the minute as we're 2 0 to the good in the home leg. It would be amazing to keep a clean sheet. That away goal system is one that I think 
think it's a little archaic personally i would I would get rid of the away goal uh, i think it's a little unfair um and just have it you know be the best team wins on the night you take it to extra time and penalties if you need to but but um but yeah here we go we are going to go into half time 2-0 to the good and uh thoroughly deserved i think we can all we can all agree. We're just going to tell the boys to uh, to make a point in the second half. I am going to, in this leg, uh, just mark this striker up and press him a bit, just to make sure. You will see there is a game going on in the Ortswegen. Uh, I say it terribly. Someone does keep correcting me. Uh, but yeah, you'll see AIK are leading in that game. I'm just keeping an eye on it. One eye is always on the league because we're going very, very well this season. But we are at the 60-minute mark, and I am going to make a change. What with league football um, around the corner, I am actually going to bring Karstrom and Chukwani on for Horidison and Libro. Keep those two players of ours, those two very good players of ours, fit uh, for league football. This is happening as the substitutions have just been made. Leach into Karstrom. He's going to spread this wide into Chukwani. He's got the run of his man. He comes back to Karstrom. Shot is blocked. We've still got it, though. Salo, Leach. Are we going to see that run again? No, we're not. Uh, Evans really should have done. Oh, it's a brilliant save. He's tipped that one onto the post. It was nearly free for Ian Leach. What a shot that was uh, from the left-sided player. Who has been a masterstroke of a signing on loan for the season from West Ham. I'm hoping we could potentially renew that for next season. Um, should we still be here? Obviously, you know, with this with this rise in reputation, there could be some big clubs looking at us potentially next year. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, with the with the key being to get to a Champions League final, we have to be at the best team possible. And you know, if a big team comes in, we've got to uh, we've got to be open to that offer. Salo with a ball over the top, Mana strolls in. He can't score. Mana stroll is on a little bit of a. Uh, of a goal scoring drought. Uh, there is about to be a, a highlight, but Koike Line is going to come on for Manastral. Uh, that obviously will happen after this highlight takes place. Uh, Sigurdsson, Karstrom into Tucker. Uh, he goes all the way back to the goalkeeper. Um, you know, if we're keeping the football, I'm not too sad about it. Into Sigurdsson, Karstrom again, Podosto into Salo, who's got the ball, and he's got a bit of space as well. He's going to come wide, always going to go wide. We love the wings, we always look for width as Ian Leach with the ball, and Chukwani's header is over the bar. We've we've dominated the game, we really, really have dominated the game. It was close in the first 20 minutes, but since then, we've just gone up a level as Leach is into the box again, and it's a great run and a great shot, but he can't get the all important third goal. I think a third goal basically basically kills this game off doesn't it um we look good we look good for our money at 2-0 to be fair but a third goal would have definitely definitely killed this game off as uh they really don't know what to do with themselves their substitute that was playing centre midfield is now playing right back so uh this game is done this game is over we have won it 2-0 comfortably 2-0 as well and uh i'll see you for the next leg okay my friends so here we go second leg of this all-important champions league tie it does have to be said uh we're going to go with a very strong team again i don't think we can really afford to be messing around at this stage uh obviously we have a healthy advantage going into this one but uh still need to get the job done we have played a league game i'll get you caught up on that when this episode is done and dusted but we're going to go for fana in goal nientel evans at fullback Prost so Tucker, centre-back, Libro, Sigurdsson, Salo in the centre of midfield. Chukwani is going to come in and play on the right-hand side. Ian Leach on the left and Manastrol up top. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Um, second and last game of today's episode. Hopefully the last qualifier we've got to play. Obviously we do potentially have a playoff in the off-in and I know who we're facing and uh, they're quite a big club so this this could be this could be as far as we go really um, it's one of those the Champions League is a difficult difficult competition to navigate but the good thing about it is that it's helped us earn a bit of money 120k from the first game at home 170k for the second game at home we sold out in that fixture which was amazing to see uh, but yeah we've still got to try and navigate this away leg as uh, as this team does come forward for the first time uh, 17 minutes into the game and they're popping it about quite nicely at the moment that's a really good ball in behind and it's 1-0 and it's not the start we wanted it's really really not 
Um, we've started slow. We have started slow. I'm going to demand more of the lads and uh, and just see what happens. A couple of players on yellow cards already. And the away leg was always going to be a lot tougher than that home leg. But second highlight of this game, and it's us on the football. For Fana was put under pressure, but Tucker out to Salo, whose long ball over the top is magnificent, and Manastrol can't finish in front of you lot. Basically, he scores when you're not watching, but when your eyes are on him, he can't seem to do the job. That was a really good corner in. It's a shame nobody could get a header on it. And it's a good opportunity that's gone a begging for Manastrol. An away goal would have been massive, absolutely massive in this game. I'm a little worried, I'm going to be honest, at the fact that they're 1-0 to the good in this. And, uh, you know, one more goal, it's level. And that's not what we want to see. You're going to see Jagarden are 1-0 to the good in the league which is going to be very, very good for them. Salo, free kick, usually good from this position. And Yuka Salo puts us in to a 1-1 draw and a very, very good lead in the tie. That's an away goal. That's important. And that is a beauty of a free kick. I'm just going to ask for a bit more out of the lads in the second half. You will see, statistically, we're on top, but... You know, as far as the scoreline is concerned, it's 1-1 on the night. 3-1 on aggregate and um, not an easy day at the office, it does have to be said. As uh, their goalkeeper does kick out. Oh, I thought Chukwani was going to nick in there and get the ball. We are closing down and Chukwani has done well to tackle. Now inside to Manastrol. He's on his own. Lots of work to do there for Manastrol. Was always going to be a very, very difficult chance to try and take. And uh, he didn't manage to do it. As uh, I am keeping an eye on the team. Leech isn't having the best game out on the left. Manastrol's not playing too well up front either. And it might be the two changes that we make. Well, I'm definitely going to make the Leech change. We're going to bring Holmhoff on. Because he's just come back from injury. And it'd be good to see him get some football. Um, Libro Sigerson on yellow cards. Uh, I think... You know what? No. I want to give Chukwani the 90 if I can. Um, I'm going to go Libro. He's just more important to us in the long term, you know, in every aspect. As Salo now picks up a knock, of course he does when I make two changes. Um, don't have another centre mid on the bench, unfortunately. So he might have to just see this one out. Although I could push Chukwani inside which might be an option as we win that header. Lovely stuff. Manistrol comes deep to get now into Karstrom. Chukwani. Come on, lovely ball. Oh, Manistrol just cannot score when you're watching. I'm going to make that change. Um, it's going to be Horidison on, and we're going to push Chukwani inside. And we'll play him as a roaming playmaker, I think. That might suit him quite well. Chukwani on the ball now. There's probably nothing going to come from this highlight. That's why I chose to make the substitution while it was going on. Uh, there you go. I am proved right. Asalo does now come off. We're going to rest him up because that injury, we don't want it to be serious, is a big part of our plans going forward this season. As Evans now on the ball, Karstrom, Evans, little one-two between the two players, Sigurdsson, Chukwani, Karstrom. It's good football, really good football. Holding on to the ball as Evans now into Chukwani. Holmhoff, if we look wide, he's out there on the left. Oh, he was floating about. We're going to come right, though, instead. And the end tail with a lovely touch to try and go past his man. Doesn't quite happen. He is going to receive back. Can he dig it out this time? No. Karstrom does. Oh, my God. This keeper will not let Manistrol score today. He's had so many opportunities and just couldn't put any of them in the back of the net. None of it's really going to matter because we are going to go through. But you know what? This Olympia were very good at home. They struggled at our gaff. But a different team here. Very, very different team. But we go through to an unlikely Champions League playoff. And here it is, ladies and gents. This is who we're going to be Taking on a PAOK, uh, obviously a big team in Greece, uh, you know, plenty of history. They're going to be tough. I've, I've taken a look at their team already. They've got some very, very good players. They're an aging squad. Majority of their team's well over 30 years of age, but still cannot be ignored at just how good uh, they are. And uh, they're going to be very, very tough to beat. I do believe this is over two legs. I will just check that in a minute. Uh, Parsons, we've accepted this because he's uh, 
his uh, contract's about to expire, so we're just gonna we're just gonna let him go on a free transfer, I think. Uh, so yeah, let's go to the fixtures. Let's take a look. Uh, so yeah, we've got North Coppin, and then we've got. Uh, Champions League playoff leg one and two. I guess that's what we'll be back for, ladies and gents. That Champions League. You would have had a, basically a triple header of Champions League football. Um, and, you know, I know you all love it, so it doesn't really matter too much. Um, with the, the, at the end of the day, the Champions League, when we get drawn in these games, I really want to concentrate on it because it's more about the Champions League journey than it is anything else in this save. So, um, you know, we, I really want to concentrate on the games. And, you know, if this is as far as we go, this is as far as we go. But um, it's knockout football and anything can happen. First leg at home, second leg away. That's going to be coming up next episode. You will see Helsingborg 2-0 uh, win against them. We've been very, very good lately in the league. Um, very, very consistent and another really good win. If we just take a look at the table, you're going to see Jugarden have played a game more than us, but only a point ahead. Uh, so if we can go and win our game in hand, that will be great for us. This guy, this guy's here, Kohlberg, right-sided winger, scoring goals for fun. Might be one to take a look at at the end of the season, um, you know, should we remain. He's he's really, really doing a good job. Uh, for a struggling Colmar team, it does have to be said, uh, Tegstrom as well. He's having a really good season for a struggling Helsingborg team. What's he look like? Mm, he's not actually that good. But, uh, yeah, there's some some really, really top, top players in the division at the minute that we need to keep an eye on. So there you go, my friends. We're done and dusted for another episode of Project Scandinavia, as it does seem to feel like it's getting rather dark in this room. But uh, the lights are coming down on today's episode. But next time, more Champions League football. Be sure to look forward to it, my friends. But I'm done and dusted. I'll see you next time. Subscribe if you're new. Like if you've enjoyed. Visit that description box to find all the stuff like Discord, socials, best things to follow to not only stay up to date, but have a good laugh as well as part of the ever-growing I guess you could call Fan Dan community because of the two channels now. But my friends, I'm off. Saluting you all. Enjoy your day. And I'll see you next time.